Are you building a new computer or upgrading an old one? Today I'm going to show you how to bench test a new motherboard and CPU before you install them into your new computer or upgrade. Stay tuned. Let's start with unboxing our parts. We're going to start with our motherboard here. We're also going to need a CPU and memory. In the event that your CPU doesn't support onboard video, you're going to have to get a discrete graphics card. You can either use the graphics card that you're going to use in the system, or if you have one laying around, that'll work too. For this, I'm actually going to use a pad to set the motherboard on, but you can also use the motherboard box. It works perfectly fine. I've done it tons of times before and I've never had a problem. So, now when we open our CPU, we need to take a look and see what kind of cooler it has on it. Some of these AMD coolers actually have screws that hold them into the motherboard instead of clips. And that's the same way this one is. So what we got to do is we have to pull the retaining clips off of the motherboard right now. So I'm going to do that real quick. These are held on by four screws. They just screw right out. You want to make sure your motherboard is sitting on a surface so the plate on the bottom doesn't fall off. You don't want this sitting up in the air or anything. If you pick the motherboard up after this, you'll actually drop the plate off of the bottom of the motherboard. So with those off, now we take our CPU and to install the CPU, you're going to notice on the processor itself, it has a little gold arrow right there. And that arrow has to point to the bottom corner right here, the socket. You'll see the socket has a little shape in it as well. So you stick that in just like that. Push the retaining clip down. And then grab your cooler. And with your cooler, you want to make sure that these screws don't touch the motherboard itself. So what I typically do is I get down real close and I line the screws up with the back plate. And then holding the CPU cooler down, you want to start with just a couple screws on one corner and then go across and keep doing that until all the screws are tight. You don't want to screw one screw down without going across like this because you, want, you want to have even pressure across the CPU. So doing it this way, you're only screwing it down a little bit each time and the CPU cooler doesn't um, take the chance of damaging the CPU socket. Okay, we're almost there. And there we go. So then, I typically take the wire here and roll it in a little loop and then plug it in. That way, the wire doesn't get in the way of anything. So now, we're going to install our memory. And to do that, on DDR4 motherboards, this side actually doesn't um, clip. It's the this side that does. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our memory modules out here. And plug them in straight down. And you'll actually hear a clip when they snap in place. Okay, so now we got everything put together. The next step is to power it up. To do that, we need a power supply. So we take our power supply and hook it up just like you would if it was inside of the case. Take a monitor and power. Then you're going to need a keyboard. Now 
And then with e EUFI BIOSes, you can actually hook a mouse up. This makes it a little bit easier to use the BIOS. So at this point, we're ready to power it up. And to power it up, I typically use a screwdriver, turn the power on to the power supply, and then ground the pins that connect to the power button. So you do that just like this. And there we go. Now we wait to see if it actually posts. And there we go. And here we are. So in the event that it didn't post, there's a few things that you can check on. The first thing that I would do is try to reseat the memory. Make sure that the memory modules themselves are seated properly. You might have to pull them out, maybe even switch them and plug them back in. And that sometimes can be an issue. Um, also, if you're using a discrete graphics card, make sure that the power is plugged into the graphics card because not plugging that power into the card will actually cause a computer not to post. Uh, the third thing is on AMD motherboards, especially if you're using one of the newer Ryzen processors, it is a possibility that you need to flash the BIOS. And we're going to go over how to do that right now. If you suspect that the reason why your motherboard won't post is because of an old BIOS that doesn't support your CPU, there's a few options you have. What you're going to need is an older AM4 processor that is supported by the BIOS that your motherboard currently uses. To do that, you can either borrow one from a friend, if you have one, then it's no problem. But if those two options won't work for you, then you can also contact AMD support and they actually have a loaner program where they can send you an older processor so you can flash your BIOS and then you send it back to them. Um, the other option too is, is you can contact a local computer guy and see if for a couple of bucks maybe he can help you out by flashing your motherboard with a new BIOS. The first step in flashing the BIOS is going to be to get the BIOS itself. So we're going to have to go to the manufacturer's website and get the BIOS and copy it to a thumb drive. So let's do that right now. So the first thing we need to do is plug a thumb drive into our computer. Once we do that, we're going to find our motherboard manufacturer's website. So we go to Google and type our motherboard manufacturer's name. In my case, it's ASUS. And then afterwards, type support. Go ahead and click on the site. Once the site opens, we're going to go down to motherboards. For a series of motherboard, mine here is an ASUS Prime, so we're going to pick that and we're going to type the model number A320M-K. Click on that. Click driver and utility. Then we're going to scroll down, click on BIOS and firmware. And then what we want is the latest BIOS for our motherboard. And in this case, this one's January 16th, 2020. We're going to download that one. Then we're going to open it up. We're going to copy this BIOS file over to our thumb drive. Make sure you open the zip file and copy it over. And after you're done, you can go ahead and shut everything down, pull your thumb drive out, and let's get back to the motherboard. Once you have your BIOS image copied to a flash drive, let me take you through the steps on how to flash your BIOS on an ASUS motherboard. Your motherboard may differ, so I would refer to the manufacturer's website to make sure of the specific steps. So the first thing I do is plug the USB flash drive into a USB port. Then in your BIOS, you should have a tools section. And in that section, on an ASUS, it's going to be ASUS Easy Flash. So you open that up, you pick your storage device, and then you hit Next. Then from your storage device, you're going to pick the BIOS image that you want to flash. And then the BIOS is going to ask you if you want to flash this image, and you hit Yes. Now that the BIOS is flashing, it is extremely important that you don't lose power at this point. If you lose power, there's a really good chance that your motherboard will be a brick. So whatever you do, only attempt doing this if you know the power is reliable 
at the time that you're doing it. So we're going to sit here and wait and we may skip ahead until this is done. Oh, seriously? Come on. Did the power really just go out in the middle of flashing a BIOS? Gotcha. Power didn't really go out. But in the event that it did go out, that could have been really bad. So, like I said before, make sure you have really reliable power at the time that you're doing this. And it's not uncommon to actually hook the computer up to a battery backup if that's what you need to do. So while this is finishing, we're going to fast forward a little bit until the end. Okay, now that the BIOS has finished flashing, the system will restart on its own. And there we go. Once the system restarts, at this point, it's okay to shut the computer down, reinstall your new processor, and it should boot just fine. And that's all there is to it. Now you're ready to install this motherboard and CPU into your new computer or upgrade your old one. The reason why you want to do this is because it's always easier to troubleshoot problems outside of the case than it is inside of the case. And you might need your old computer to be able to look up possible solutions to problems that you may have. So it's always a good idea to test your hardware first before you put it into the new computer or upgrade your old one. I hope this video helped you. If it did, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for coming. Now, enjoy some bloopers. Let's start by unboxing our parts. Or just throwing them all over the bench. We can do that too. All right. Let's do this. Let's start with unboxing our parts. We'll start here with our C. That's our CPU. This is our motherboard. Now that we have our BIOS, let me show you the process in which you need to do to flash it. So you plug your thumb drive into your motherboard. Try not to plug it into the ethernet port. It won't work. Cut. 